All right, welcome back with Blaze Capital. My name is Justin, and we have another CEO interview for you today. So I am here with Robert from Neon Minds. Hey, Robert, how are you? Rob, sorry. Hey, Justin. Good morning. Uh, I'm doing. I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. Um, yeah, so uh, I've been personally quite interested in the sector we're going to talk about today, which is mushrooms and psychedelics. So um, as we get started here, maybe you could tell me a bit about your background and uh, how you got started in, uh, in the sector here. Yeah, sure. So thanks. Uh, so I'm, I'm Rob Tesserolo. I'm the CEO and president of Neon Mind Biosciences. Uh, I'm a Canadian um, who's been in the pharmaceutical industry for about 25 years. I've had the good fortune of leading pharmaceutical companies uh, for about 15 years now, both in Canada and the U.S. Um, and I've worked right across the sort of the value chain in pharmaceuticals from research and development right through to commercialization uh, of, of, uh, of pharmaceutical products. And I joined um, Neon Mind Biosciences back in January of this year, just after our, uh, uh, just after our uh, IPO. Um, mm -hmm. And I got interested and involved in the psychedelic space you know, about a year and a half ago, when I heard about, uh, I heard about, and I ended up joining a company called uh, MindMed, who was one of the first companies to to enter into the psychedelic space and sort of pursue uh, research and development in this in this area. And I and I and I scratched, you know, scratched below the surface to sort of really understand what was going on there. And what was in, what was interesting is that there's this growing body of academic evidence out there that says and shows that there is, you know, potentially great healing power, or great healing opportunities from these substances. And while these substances have been around synthetically for 50 years or so, and lots of them occur in nature um, or organically in nature for you know, thousands of years, obviously, we, we don't have a regulated substance or we have very few regulated substances, psychedelic substances that have been shown to have safety and efficacy for a specific indication in a specific patient set. And as a, someone who's led pharmaceutical innovation over my career, you know, I, I'm, I'm quite interested in um, finding new ways to deliver, you know, health improvements and, and to, to help patients that are in need. And so, so I got involved at the time and, uh, and now I've come, uh, come on to Neon Mind Biosciences and, um, you know, I really like what was going on here. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people, I think almost everybody in the sector has heard about Neon or uh, heard of uh, MindMed. So uh, I think that uh, it, it shows you have a little bit of a pedigree. And again, at least for the companies who are currently public, it shows that again, you have those connections. And again, a uh, pretty good base understanding. I also think that uh, for me personally, I am always much more receptive to something that is natural uh, versus taking something that's more like pharmaceutical. So um, again, like I know that cannabis is ca uh, getting a lot of traction right now, but I think that there are a lot of medical benefits to mushrooms that people just might not be aware of. Um, so, uh, if people have never heard about Neon Mind, um, could you briefly explain what the company does? Right. So we are we're a company that's focused on um, psychedelic research and development, and so we have at the moment two psilocybin-based um, development programs that we are in, in evaluate investigating for uh, the treatment of obesity or weight management or the maintenance of weight weight loss. Um, these are early stage programs, so we're in the preclinical stage at the moment, which means they're being, which, 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 which is another word for animal testing, and so we've seen some really exciting results thus far, and we'll now graduate those two programs, or we'll attempt to graduate those two programs into human trials in the, in, you know, over, the, over the coming months, and um, try to demonstrate, uh, you know, safety and efficacy in, you know, in humans. Mm -hmm. um, so... Another follow-up question here, I'm just thinking out loud, is uh, so it looks like you have a little bit of experience in the in the sector, which is still fairly new. Um, why did you just decide to choose Neon Mind as the company that you want to work with and develop uh, this this further? Yeah. So when you think about the psychedelic space, there's there are companies that are there are new companies cropping up all the time. It's it's it certainly is an exciting time, you know, to be in this space, um, and new companies pop up right across the value chain from delivery of services to cultivation, to research, to, to early research, to, to late research. And what I was looking for was a company that had a really good research idea mm -hmm. and had filed some intellectual property, some patents around it and had some funding um, to get into the, get into the development um, phase of these assets. And, and when you think about the psychedelic space, you have a lot of companies that are focused in the psychi psychiatric um, indications. So major depression, treatment resistant depression, suicidal ideation, ADHD. You have a lot of companies that are focused there. And what makes Neon Mind Biosciences unique is we look at these psychedelic substances and we say, hey, these can have, we believe that they can have a um, benefit for patients that are obese 
or suffering from obesity, struggling with obesity, and are looking for weight management to lose and to lose weight and to maintain that weight loss. And so we're sort of we're sort of not within that sort of herd. You know, we're sort mm-hmm. of off on our own, looking in, looking in that other space. It's a tremendously important space. Uh, the numbers on obesity are staggering. We can talk about about that if if if, if you'd like. And so that's that was really interesting to me for for neon mind biosciences is here's a company with a really great idea, really great research idea, some early results that are encouraging, and we're not mm-hmm. going to be we're not going to be in this very competitive space that you know that that I'm sure your viewers and all of us and you know all of us who are you know investors are seeing as exciting but becoming crowded you know by the day by the you know by by the month by the day. So it sounds like you have a, a little bit of a unique, um, a unique path you're trying to go down, even though it might be in the same sector as other companies. So that sounds pretty interesting. Um, so this is a really good lead into my next question here. So what are some of your short-term corporate objectives? Right. So as I mentioned, uh, as I mentioned, so we have two uh, psilocybin-based um, development programs. And what's, what's, what's critical for us and for any company, for any company that has a psychedelic development program is to have a really clear path to go from wherever you're at to be able to put a, an application in front of a health regulator, a health regulator being like the FDA or Health Canada or the EMEA in Europe. And mm-hmm. so the idea here is not so much that, um, uh, you know, we don't see you know, de- you know, decriminalization or, or, or widespread use of these, uh, of these substances because of a legalization event. We see these, these substances being able to help patients when they have been approved by a health regulator. regulator. So what we've done since I've come on board is take, take, take steps to ensure we have a very clear validated development program that shows us how to get from today Right to an application f- with the with the FDA and the various steps that have to go through that that a, a company has to go through to demonstrate safety and efficacy. So that's mm-hmm. that 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 development plan will become more clear over the coming weeks. I think also that um, uh, one one of the other ex- exciting elements you know of a, of a company like us is that we're constantly adding talent to our to our to our organization talent that we think can help us meet those objectives. And so as we've uh, as we as we've begun to map out. Uh, the development plan we've attracted and we've, we've, we've brought on a variety of consultants that have, you know, just tremendous experience in this, in this area. I think that sets us up for success to be able to execute the first steps of those plans, you know, when they're, when they're, when they are in fact mapped out. Mm -hmm. So it kind of sounds like there's two business segments to your, to your company, like where you guys are more like consumer focused, but then also doing research. And I can tell you from personal experience that I've tried microdosing, but again, it's not, uh, it's not a science yet where, again, there might be benefits that people are experiencing, but it's not measured and uh, calculated. So uh, maybe you could just touch on a little bit more of those two business segments, the consumer side and the research side. And if I was wrong on that, please correct me. Yeah, so there's a bit of a nuance there to what you said. So we have two, we, we indeed have two segments uh, within within Neon Mind. We have a consumer segment and we have a, mm. uh, a pharmaceutical segment or a research segment. The, the consumer segment isn't focused on um, uh, psychoactivity or or, or 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 substances that have any psychoactivity. Our consumer segment has um, some functional foods um, that are infused with uh, that are infused by mushroom uh, mushroom um, that are infused with various mushrooms, legal mushrooms, mushrooms that don't have any psychoactivity, and those those consumer products are being are made available. Uh, as coffees at the as coffees at the moment, and we have some applications in front of Health Canada uh, to have um, some additional recipes uh, in, uh, approved for uh, uh, as a as an actual health product. And we also mm-hmm. have designs on launching some dietary supplements in the consumer side of our business. And that consumer side of our business is much you know closer to market in the sense that you don't have to proceed through you know multiple years of clinical studies, you know, try to get mm-hmm. an FDA approval or Health Canada approval. The other segment of our business is on pharmaceutical research, but within that segment of our business, we have two development programs. We have one development program that's focused on higher dose psilocybin, which would in fact be a um, uh, uh, which would in fact uh, have a patient experience having a hallucinatory experience, a hallucinogenic experience, which would enhance the psychotherapy that they would be getting for their for their for their their condition. But our other program is a lower dose psilocybin, which maybe is more akin to the to microdosing you're, you're speaking of. Our concept there is this is a low enough dose that would be sub, sub-hallucinogenic or sub-experiential, 
but it would be mm -hmm. high enough that it's going to be activating the receptors that are responsible for appetite su suppression within our within within our brains. And so in that lower dose program, that would be more of a maintenance, more of a chronic therapy that we would, that we, that we are trying to build, to trying to, trying to um, develop, mm. but it would be akin to the, the microdosing that you're referring to. And our hope is that over time, our clinical trials will show and demonstrate that there's efficacy at both high and low dose, albeit in somewhat different mo treatment modalities, one being associated with psychotherapy and one being more of a just a regular daily pharma, uh, uh, pharma, uh, pharmaceutical that, that somebody would ultimately take, that a patient would ultimately take. So two really interesting things you said is that, uh, so again, I live in Vancouver. Uh, I'm, I'm in Vancouver, Canada. We got a lot of hipsters here. And uh, I know that uh, people are always looking for the flavor on the next big superfoods. And uh, for, me, for me personally, I have been taking mushroom coffee lately. Um, I've also been taking, uh, like there's like capsules you can get with like the four super, uh, super mushrooms. And uh, I kind of think that uh, like from, from, the, from the two business segments, there's the one side where this could be a potentially new superfood. And uh, again, I think that uh, mushrooms are unique because they're not really a vegetable. They're not really uh, like they're, they're quite unique in that aspect. So I think there's some benefits that um, have not been fully explored. And uh, I know that the hipsters are usually the first adopters where they want to try these things out right away. And I've, I've been hearing a lot of people just talking about the benefits of mushrooms, nothing to do with psychedelics. So I think that's quite interesting. And then the second thing you mentioned was that um, in terms of this, uh, the psychoactive part, um, again, I've been taking microdoses, but it's not like, oh, take this much and get this benefit. So having a company like yourself who, are, who is doing the research to get things further along is going to give people like myself uh, more confidence. But the people who, are, who have never tried this before, um, they know that if it, gets, uh, if it gets past the point where it's now been researched, it's been developed, and it's been approved, um, that would give a lot more confidence to people. And I think that um, like, like I mentioned earlier, natural, natural alternatives to existing uh, solutions is something that everyone is receptive to right now. Um, I think that, uh, like, what, what do you think about that? Well, so, 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 so it's interesting. Um, what, what we're finding, and in, in I think, I think in, at times there's, there's um, a bit of resistance to company, you know, corporations coming in with intellectual property and designs on uh, you know, profiting from uh, the development of these, of these substances, of these assets. But the reality is this, is that everybody who, who has a view on psychedelics uh, having healing power, I think what underlies that is that they believe that that healing power should be uh, made available to, 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 to patients you know, at large. Mm -hmm. And I would just encourage everyone and I would, you know, I'm a, I'm a true proponent of the idea that with regulation, the most patients will, will, will get benefit mm -hmm. because this is still going to be an asset. These are still going to be substances that have these effects that need to be put on board a patient that need to be monitored, that need to be treated, that are going to be in a health, under the care of a health, health, uh, health, healthcare worker or, or um, healthcare mm -hmm. practitioner. And it's, it's approved medicines that have been demonstrated to have safety and efficacy and in, 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 in a specific patient population that have high quality, that have you know, uh, high quality controls, et cetera, that actually get broad base use. And so, so that's what we're finding is you know, we're trying to you know, not only work on our, own, on our own internal programs and advance them, but you know, our view is that the, the word needs to get out that the way for value to be created within this space and for the is the and for the way and the way for for the highest number of patients to to actually access these medicines is to actually drag them through rigorous clinical trials and then without a shadow of a doubt mm -hmm. or, or remove all doubt that there's a, that there are safety concerns or there aren't isn't efficacy and, and demonstrate that there really is and and that's that's what we're focused on now you know I, I would say to you Justin is that you know this is a this is the long game as well right you know unlike mm. the consumer business that you referred to a moment ago which is you know our copies are are available you know right now on our on our on our website and our uh, our consumer platform but unlike that which is already on the market and you know companies can already uh, make them available to patients this is a long game in terms of development that's going to require you know hundreds of millions of dollars to and and many years to determine and demonstrate you know the efficacy of these of these substances and you know, we think that that's good work for us to be undertaking. And we think it's important work for us to be undertaking. And the nice thing about it, when we do talk to healthcare practitioners and, and patients and people who are, and patients suffering with obesity, what we find is a very dissatisfied marketplace that, have, that would welcome something that would be innovative. And we think these could be, these are, these are, you know, you know, these are the definition of disruptive agents, you know, if and when we can demonstrate um, uh, safety and efficacy.
And for myself personally, if I, if I had a, a medical issue, again, regardless of what it was, weight, uh, it could be something different. If I was presented with two different options, one being natural, one being a pharmaceutical, uh, I would I would almost certainly uh, choose the natural one. I think that the average uh, consumer would agree with that too. And again, it it just gives uh, it gives people an option. Right now, there's not very many options. And I think that uh, again, this is definitely going to have to get researched and developed more. But more options is very good for the consumer. And again, natural options. I think that's something that are people people like myself are very receptive to, which is why I'm quite interested in your company. Right. And, you know, I think that there is a wellness component to mushrooms and there is a wellness component to the coffees and, and, and other functional foods that we will, will, we will launch eventually. Um, and, you know, and that's, but that's that in, in our mind, that's a bit of a different bar with respect to uh, with respect to the consumer. And I think that uh, I think that, you know, a consumer seeking a product for wellness is you got sort of one uh, hurdle rate to get over with respect to um, the, the products that they select and, and that they choose. I think that, you know, physicians, uh, hospital, physicians, hospitals, clinics, you know, that are doling out medicine and that are taking patients, you know, through therapy, um, you know, they, they, they do require that added level of science to demonstrate that, you know, the products are safe and effective and, you know, natural products can become pharmaceuticals. I mean, that's, you know, pharmaceuticals is more of a stamp that a stamp of approval from uh, from a from a from a health regulator that says you know this is a medicine. And so, you know, there's that's that's the way we see psilis, our psilocybin based programs um, is mm. you know they've been they've been identified in nature and they, they come from from mushrooms. But you know ours will be a synthetic uh, psilocybin, obviously, and 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 it will form the basis of what we hope what well, we we hope it will form the basis of a really important uh, medicine. Um, that will, you know, that will be available, that, that will be very helpful to patients suffering from obesity. So which markets are you in today and where do you plan to go? So the thing about drug research is it, it, it rarely makes sense if it doesn't make sense for the U.S. market. The U.S. market is just gigantic, as, as, as everyone is aware. So we are a Canadian-based company, but our, all of our activities are done with a, with a mind's eye for, you know, how do we ultimately make these medicines, uh, get them approved in, 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 you know, markets around the globe. And so the intellectual property that we file is always global. Uh, or as often as it can be is always global in nature. And so we are, we have our sights set on the U S to be sure and Canada as well. And then, you know, ultimately, um, you know, ultimately those are, those are, those are, you know, those are the most important markets for us. Um, mm -hmm. the, the prevalence of, 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 um, the prevalence of obesity is, is, uh, is, is incredible in, in the U S and there's lots of patients there that are, that have a, a great unmet need. And so, you know, that, that's our initial focus is North America. Perfect. And uh, that, that's kind of what I was expecting. So again, I know they're Canadian based, but again, the US is 10 times bigger. So there's 10 times more opportunities, we all know. Yeah. Um, so another, another question here. So I know you're recently public. It's only, only companies only been public for a couple of months now. So uh, um, what are the goals uh, now that you're public and there's more eyes on you now? So again, more, more people are going to be familiar with the company. What are your goals as being a public company? Yeah. So that's, that's, that's a great question, right, Justin? And every private company gets asked that question of when are you going to go public and, and lots of public companies get asked uh, depending on their valuation and, and, and whatnot, you know, why did you go, why did you go public? And so for us, it came down, that wasn't part of the company when that decision was made, but you know, as, as I understand it and support the, the, the view uh, was really made for, for two reasons and two important reasons. One was to create liquidity for, you know, uh, investors that had been part of the company for, for a number, a number of years and for new investors that we're going to, that are going to be joining, you know, joining this, uh, you know, this, this, this journey that we're on. Um, mm -hmm. And then the second, so that's, that was the one element. And the second element was really uh, with a mind's eye again, to the fact that we're going to need to raise capital, right? I mean, is like these development programs, they, there is a significant amount of capital that needs to be aimed at them. And, you know, you can't, you, you know, it, it, the, the public market remains, continues to remain, you know, probably the best place to, to raise that sort of capital. And that was why we went public. Mm -hmm. So getting the, getting the attention, getting some early traction, letting investors get in early if they believe in the company. And then again, like obviously, uh, if a company is going to grow, they need more resources. So that, that makes perfect sense to me. Yeah. Um, so where can we learn more about Neon Mind? Like where, where would be the best place? We can leave some links in the video after. So again, like I think your website would be a great place. I think the investor deck would be a good place. Like where can we learn more about Neon Mind? 
Yeah, that's that's the, so so we try to over communicate, obviously, as a public company, making sure that the, the important uh, material items that, uh, that, that that we have going on are obviously made available to, to everyone. So our website, uh, Neon Mind Biosciences, is the best place to go. We should leave that link on the on the uh, on the channel, as you've mentioned. And within mm -hmm. that, within that, um, within, within our website, I think you know two things I would call out. One is our investor deck is is has been updated to reflect sort of where we're at with our two programs and the focus of our of our organization. That would be the one thing. The second thing I would say is just our all of our press releases uh, that sort of articulate the you know the the the, uh, the direction of the company and importantly some of the, the new people, the new capabilities that we've brought on board and that we've engaged with to help us uh, you know achieve our objectives. And then uh, I think later this month, um, or I know later this month, you know, our, our uh, year end will be uh, um, will be uh, published uh, from uh, from last year, and um, you know we'll have that on our obviously on our website as well. So my final question here is that it's uh, when we when we were talking earlier, it sounded like you had a couple of really big events which are going to be happening soon. Again, of either uh, like that's going to be like kind of clinical data data getting released. Um, that sounds like there's some other interesting things happening here. So. Why should uh, why should investors be excited about the future of Neon Mind? Yeah, so I think <clears throat> I think for, I think the number one reason to be excited about Neon Mind Biosciences is we have you know, exciting preclinical data that, that has that has been uh, that has been um, uh, that that has given us a signal to say both high and low dose psilocybin you know can be weight sparing uh, mm -hmm. uh, weight sparing in a short amount of time. And that's the, that's the, that's the number one reason is that we, we we're on the right track here in terms of these these indications which are which are uh, you know quite attractive. The second and third thing though that I would say to watch out for is you know is you know a validated clear development plan by a company who makes claim to be able to get to market with a psychedelic substance is something that should be you know I think paid attention to and you know we we believe we won't be in that position in the next you know six weeks. And then I think the third thing is to say that there's additional preclinical data that's under a study that's underway. It's a larger study with uh, you know you know greater you know greater number uh, uh, greater number of um, uh, of animals and you know we'll we'll have those results sort of mid year and and you know we 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 hope those uh, are exciting as well. And so those those are those are the sort of three near term things I think folks can be uh, focused on. I think the last thing is that, you know, we're ultimately looking for a path to get into humans, you know, as quickly as possible, as, as, you know, as soon as it's as soon as it's, as safety has been established, you know, we, we hope to have that phase two study designed and, uh, and enrolling by the end of the year. Um, and depending on, you know, what we find in the next few months, you know, that that's that can potentially be a pretty exciting event as well. So what I'm hearing is that uh, you are taking a unique approach to the mushroom sector. So again, th these are the takeaways that I have here. I, uh, my takeaways are that um, you have experience in the industry. Um, you've worked for the number one contender, which everyone knows about. Um, it looks like your your uh, neon mine is trying to take a unique approach, um, where again it's a little bit crowded in this area here in the psychedelic portion. You guys are trying to uh, take a new path. Um, you guys are taking multiple business segments. So thinking about how can we show the benefits of mushrooms that are non-psychedelic, but also the ones that are psychedelic? And again, also trying to take a unique approach here. So it sounds like there's a lot of exciting things that are going to happen here in the future for the company. And I am very happy for, uh, for just uh, talking with you today. And I look forward to hearing uh, the future updates on the company. So thank you again very much, Rob. I appreciate it. Great. Thanks for having me today. Thank you. Bye now.